Welcome to the Wish I'd Known Then podcast. I'm Sarah Rosette. And I'm Jamie Albright. And this week on the show, we have Jamie Davis. Yes, we do. He's a repeat guest and it was great. Yes, we caught up with him and heard all about like he's doing a Kickstarter that's coming up. This is his second one. So there's lots of Kickstarter tips, but we also talked about lots of other things like uh, best and worst advice he's been given Yep, and just kind of a just it was a really good like interview and he's been doing this a long time so yeah. he had some really good insights oh really good insights and I think we could do a whole show on best and worst uh yes in Advice. fact you could probably create a whole podcast which is <laughs> what we did uh but <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> yeah so that's coming up soon yeah and um so we have some supporters this week. Yeah, we do. And uh, yesterday we did our supporter QA mm-hmm. and uh, we had all of the people on there were new authors. And I thought that Pretty was much, so yeah. interesting. Yeah. And we did it with Claire Taylor and it was great. I mean, mm-hmm. there was some really great uh, nuggets of information that were shared. And uh, mm-hmm. we appreciate yeah, Claire we and it. we appreciate you guys. Yeah, I had a blast and it's gone out. Um, on the feed. So if you're yes. a supporter, you should be able to have that and it should be available to you in your own private RSS feed. And yes. if you don't have that, just email uh, support at buzzsprout.com and they can help you get connected up with that. Okay. We have a couple of new supporters this week. We're so excited to welcome Lisa Roberts, who has the book stack emoji and Garrity with the, what is that? The, the scale of justice. Scales of justice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have Laura uh, Durham, and she has the rocket ship, and Jillian has the um, leaf, like the, the maple looking leaf, and Allison Ching has the heart. And we just appreciate you guys so much. Yeah. So shout out to to Laura Durham. She's been on the podcast as a guest yes. before. So it's so cool to see all these names, and we're just so thankful to have supporters yes. and yes. your support covers our time yes. and starting this month, mm-hmm. we have some industry supporters coming on and yes. G- June is going to be Vellum. So yes. welcome to our industry supporter Vellum yes. and the industry supporters help pay for transcription, which is a new thing that we're going to be working on. Mm-hmm. And it also helps cover the production cost as well. Yes, it does. So thank you Vellum. And we'll talk more about them in just a little bit, but what's been going on with you? Um, let's see. So I'm getting ready to go out of town. We have, June's going to be really busy for both of us, I think. So it we're is, recording yeah. some of these episodes earlier, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I've been like sorting clothes and packing and trying to coordinate travel stuff. And I decided I had, um, another like couple of days left on my I signed up for Book Vault, their mm-hmm. highest tier, so that you can upload. You can upload as much as you want on Book Vault. Mm-hmm. There's like you pay the monthly fee, and then you can upload as many things as you want. If you're on the lower tier, you pay each time you upload a book. So uh-huh. since I had a little bit of extra time, I was like, you know what? It makes sense to go ahead and upload the rest of my print books, like my right. nonfiction. And to get the store going, I just I went and looked at the print books that I sell the most are in my two series, my historical and the English village series. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'll just do those. But then after I kind of got it going, I was like, uh, since I have it, I should go ahead and upload the rest. So I've been doing that, like doing the images and I kind of have a little system down, which works pretty well. Yeah. So I've been doing that and I've got a whole bunch of things off to like moving little projects forward. Cause I want to do a Kickstarter at the end of the summer so mm-hmm. like I'm getting some artwork done for that, getting some like just different things that need to be done to be in place. Right. Right. And um, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing in like travel stuff. So yeah. that is about okay. it for me. What about you? Well, I mentioned last week that I was going on a writer's retreat and I did yeah. that this past week. And it was with, uh, uh, we went just to the beach here in Texas and um I went with um, Eric Kelly, LJ Evans, Lucy Score, and Maria Lewis, and it was so fun and so great. We actually locked ourselves out of the house the first day (laughs) uh, for like 
two hours and it's a private home. It's not a rental. And on where we were at, there were no locksmiths. Like they would I have know, to come over yeah. from Galveston and nobody would do that. And so we had to call the police. So that was um, fun. <laughs> and we finally got in. We were trying to pick the lock, which uh, it looks a lot easier on TV than it actually is. Yeah. We were watching YouTube channels and stuff. So <laughs> none of us are fit for a life of crime, that's for sure. But interestingly oh, that's enough, awesome. we... When the first police officer got there, he was a middle-aged guy, you know. Well, yeah, middle-aged guy. Looked like, you know, he doesn't work out a lot. Let's just put it that way. Not a bit, you know, it, it, he's a nice guy, but, you know. Uh, he's but not going to be on, like, the romance cover. cover. He's not going to be like, on one of our covers. He's, no. He wasn't, like, the typical hot no. cop that shows up in no. the mystery detective stories. Okay. Correct. But <laughs> when he showed up, Lucy said... Interestingly enough, we're all romance writers. And he, the first thing he said was, well, I'm married. So I'm not sure <laughs> what he thought. <laughs> romance writers did, but uh, anyway, then he oh, said that's his funny. partner who did show up later was the one we needed to talk to. And we're like, we're not going to talk to him about anything. We just want the door unlocked, right? We just want to get in. <laughs> mosquitoes are eating us but uh that was fun and we did yoga on the beach three nights and um we had somebody come and teach us and or lead us and um it was just great and you know we did some writing and did some planning and did some brainstorming and did some admin and then the rest of the time we really just talked and laughed and you know I cried a couple of times because it was the the last time I was at the beach house I was there with my mom and sisters and where we were doing yogas where we had been on the beach and yeah I I mean how could you how could you not be emotional you know yeah like yeah yeah so they it was good though and uh so if you and the funny thing is like some couple of people said to us privately, but we all laughed about it. We were a weird group of people. Like you wouldn't normally. (laughs) Not the typical group. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but we happened to be in a, like a Facebook group. And during pandemic, we started, you know, we were like in this Facebook group, we were like, Hey, y'all want to get on a Zoom call? So the first time a lot of people got on, but then it ended up just really being the five of us plus one other woman who lives in England who couldn't come to the beach. Um, And we've continued that little messenger group and we talk pretty much every day. And so that's how that group started. And we were just like, like last year, we were like, we should get together. We should do a retreat, but it's taken us a while, you know, to Mm -hmm. get together. But if you have a group like that and you can do it, you should do it. It is, I can't tell you how good it is for the soul. It is just, it was really great. And uh, so anyway, that was, that's, that's awesome. And, yeah. I'm glad it was a good time and a good trip. Mm-hmm. And you have fodder for books. I'm sure that yes, calling the police and not being able to get into a rental or vacation home will be showing up in lots of people's books now. Oh my gosh. It was hilarious. It was so funny. And, um, So it it turns out after Lucy posted about it, that people in her group were saying again. And I was like, wait a minute, Lucy, like, I think you've withheld some important information from us. Have you locked yourself out of another house? And it was just so funny. It was was awesome. The best. That's awesome. So um, we have have a couple of things to talk about. We have, we wanted to mention coming up when this goes out. Um, in June, we are going both going to be at Anchors Con, yes. and we want to have lunch with anybody who is a podcast listener and is going to be there. We want to take you to lunch. We'll on, take you to lunch. Yeah. It's on us. Yeah. So on Friday the ninth, that's mm-hmm. when we're planning it, and it's going to be in the app if you have the app, and it'll be in the Facebook group. Mm-hmm. So let us know if you want to come and join us. We'd love to meet you. We did this last year. We did breakfast, and it was so breakfast. much fun. Yeah to it meet was. everybody and talk and share. It was great. And we were trying to do it earlier this year. So people can meet each other and kind of know and make connections for the rest of the conference, yeah, because that's, week, yeah. yeah, that always, it always helps. Mm-hmm. So we have that. 
talking about moving the day the podcast mm-hmm. is released because we want to add in transcripts and we need mm-hmm. an extra, we need a little extra time to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. So don't be shocked if the podcast shows up on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. We think that yeah. we're going to have to move to Wednesday. Yeah. So just wanted to give everybody a heads up. Right. We, we haven't forgotten about you. No, it's just going to be Wednesdays instead of Tuesdays. <laughs> right. Well, let's talk about vellum real quick, because I'm going to yes. tell you right now, vellum is a life changer. If you're it an author. Is. It yeah. is. So it's, um, they're our sponsor for this episode, our industry mm-hmm. sponsor, and they're software for Mac. And it lets you create ebook and print versions of your book that you can upload to vendors. And so I think I was going to say, why don't we just talk about why we like mm-hmm. vellum? Because I mean, I feel like I use it so much I do, and it is so easy to use that I don't even think about it. I just get in there and do my thing and then it's done. And I think so many authors use it, but we don't really talk about it that much because it's right. so easy and it just does what it's supposed to. And for so, so many of us, it's just part of our yeah daily life. I mean, it's just what we do. Um, it is for Mac. I think they had a workaround in the cloud, but I don't know. I'm not going to push that because I don't know anything about that. (laughs) But uh, if you're a Mac user, then it's definitely something you should Mm -hmm. look into. Uh, For me, it's now there was a learning curve. Everybody was like, it's so easy. It's so easy. (laughs) And I got on and I was like, "Okay, wait a minute. But there was a small learning curve. But once you get it, Mm -hmm. it it's so easy. It is just the easiest thing. And you can do so many things. Uh, Mm -hmm. If you're making box sets, you can just put it all in. It's it's just so seamless. And um, the reason I love it is because um, uh, changing back matter in the back of the book is so easy. And I don't have to send out for somebody else to do it and wait for them to get Mm -hmm. back and then to charge me. And this is a one-time fee. And yeah. Yeah. Because I did that when I, when I first my first indie book released, I hired somebody to format it for me and it looked beautiful and I loved it. Mm-hmm. And then of course I found a typo mm-hmm. or five or 10, you know, and then I had to go back to them and wait for it to be fixed. And so, and then when Vellum came out, I was like, oh, I can do this myself. And it just makes it so easy. So if I need to make a little change, I can, I can update covers mm-hmm. and you they have it where you can make the back matter link specific to each vendor. Mm-hmm. It's really easy. You can, mm-hmm. so that way, because, you know, certain ven, like vendors don't like you to have links to other vendors mm-hmm. in the back of their book. So instead of having to do all that yourself, it does it yeah, all for if you're you. Why this is a, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Set time saver. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, yeah you can. I think you used it to create your special editions for your mm-hmm. Kickstarter, right? And you yeah. can do large print. It's just yeah, great. yeah. So there's a lot of things about Vellum, mm-hmm. and we'll probably talk about it a little bit more as the month goes on. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things that I use all the time. And if I ever have a problem, I just email them, and they reply back and help me fix it. Or oftentimes it's like, Hey, here's instructions. Here's how to do what you're trying to do that. Mm-hmm. If I had done a little more search, I probably could have found it. So, right. But yeah. Right. It's, it's invaluable to me. I mean, it's one of those things that like, if you had to choose, you know, what you had to give up, I would definitely be keeping vellum. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing, like with the industry sponsors, we are like, we want to ask people if they want to help sponsor the podcast, but we only want people that or companies that we actually work with and love. So mm-hmm. Jamie and I both use it and really are happy with it. Mm-hmm. We are. So you can download Vellum for free, build, style, and preview your book, and then you purchase when you're ready to publish. And you can do that at trivellum.com backslash wish. Yeah. So you can try it out, give it a test run, see how see how you tires. like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So to speak. Yeah. So thanks to Vellum for sponsoring the podcast this month. And I think we should get on with the the interview with Jamie Davis. I think we should too. All right. Here's Jamie. Well, today we're excited to have a returning guest, Jamie Davis. Hi, Jamie. How are you? I am fantastic. Thanks for having me back. You're welcome. And we are so glad you're back. And interestingly enough, the first time we interviewed you, I was at my mother's. And I am at my mother's today. So 
something about being at my mother's brings Jamie Davis to the table. So well, just another Jamie in the house, right? That's I right. Know. That's right. I feel left out when we do these interviews, but oh well. <laughs> so here, let me read your bio and then we'll get into the questions. Jamie Davis is a nurse, retired paramedic, and author. He loves everything fantasy and sci-fi, especially the places where stories intersect with his love of medicine or gaming. Jamie lives in a home in the woods in Maryland with his wife, three kids, and a dog. He writes urban and contemporary paranormal fantasy stories, as well as lit RPG and sci-fi space westerns, among other things. So he's a very busy person. Yes. <laughs> You do a lot. A I do. Lot. And, and I don't want to tell people to write different genres, but I go where my muse takes me. And then so far, it seems to have worked OK. It, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, give us a quick update of what's been happening to you uh, since you were last on the podcast in September of 2020. Yeah, it's funny. You know, that was like right in the midst of the pandemic. So I think I have to say the first thing that I did since I've seen you is I survived the pandemic. I was going to say, just gonna... Uh, you know, <laughs> and, and I don't just mean that like physically. I mean, I, I actually had like ups and downs in my business mm -hmm. from the mm -hmm. pandemic. I, I, yeah. I, I, I stopped writing for a little bit in there and mm -hmm. had to really, really refine my focus and where I was writing and how I was writing and when mm -hmm. I was writing in the day and all those mm. things changed mm -hmm. a couple of times in there. So, um, I, I, and I know I'm not the only author that went through that. So mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I think it's important to mention that, you know, the mm -hmm. pandemic affected all of us on a professional level as well as a personal level. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I just actually just finished book number 50 that I've written. Oh my Congratulations. Gosh. And I'm happy about that. And I want to just say that it's just a number. Celebrate all of your books finished, whether it's yes. book number one, book number three, or book number 50. Yeah. They are all worth celebrating and absolutely all accomplishments. And um, I, I'm, I write as fast as I can write. And there are people who write way faster than I do. And I don't know how they do it. So, <laughs> you know, we all have their, our point where we have to just kind of settle in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, so how long have you been publishing books though? Since uh, late 2014. Okay. So you've been at this a while, but that's still a good, a good amount of back catalog for readers yes. to dive in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and that's, I think something for readers to, for writers to aspire to is, and, you know, building that back catalog, because every book becomes part of your back catalog, every book mm -hmm. you finish becomes an opportunity, another opportunity for readers to find you, mm -hmm. and another opportunity for readers to fall in love with your writing. And, right. and I think that, you know, that every book is just another avenue for coming into your universe. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love That's that. So I true. love that. Yeah. yeah. Now, do your, do your different genres intersect in any way? You know, it's funny you say that. I, I uh, just uh, like a month ago, I was I had a beta reader that I sent a story out to, and they they just sent back, and the first thing they said was, "It's just another great Jamie Davis book." Mm. Oh, I that's nice. That. So, yeah, and, yeah. and I think that you know, even though I write space westerns, I write stories about people mm -hmm. and people in situations and there's similar themes in all my books and similar character focuses in all my books. And I think that that comes back to why I am able to successfully write in multiple genres. Um, and it doesn't mean that people read all of my genres, that right. read all my readers, but I do have a core group of readers who seem to just like everything that I that I do when I venture into something different and new. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I have to take that as a win and mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and that's, that's, but that's just something I never really thought of it as, cause I actually went back and asked them, I'm like, what do you mean by a Jamie Davis book? Mm -hmm. And they just said, it's just fun. And, and I come away feeling good. And that's something that I want. I mean, my, my brand is fun fantasy and sci-fi reads. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I think I've accomplished that. If somebody says they oh, yeah. just feel good at the end of reading yeah. one of my books, yeah. then I, that's what I want. That's yeah. Awesome. And that's, that's, and you can use that like in reviews and mm -hmm. your copy to, to let people know. Cause I think that's what people are looking for. They're mm -hmm. looking for a feeling mm -hmm. and like not all books of any type of genre give you the same feeling. So like right. you can use that to pull in those readers who are looking for that. So right, right. very and, smart. And I think it's, it's a, it's a point that, 
you know, really figure out what your author brand is, is such an important thing to do. And mm -hmm. I didn't do it early on for sure. I mean, I came up with the idea of fun fantasy and sci-fi reads about three years ago, like right before mm -hmm. the pandemic. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's something that, um, you know, thinking about what your brand is and what it is to be your book um, mm -hmm. might help you define that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's very true. So, um, what is the most important lesson that you've learned recently? Like could be from the pandemic or since then, or. You know, I was thinking about this when you sent me the question and I, it really has lately been that don't turn your back on the basics. Mm. Um, you know, I've, like, I've been doing this for a while and it's coming up on 10 years next year. Mm -hmm. And I've, I get distracted by the shiny objects. You know, somebody's mm -hmm. got success with TikTok. So maybe I need to mm -hmm. do TikTok. <laughs> or maybe I need to do this or do that. Right. And, and but then but because I only have so many hours in the day, something has to give. So mm -hmm. I find I found out, figured out recently, I had stopped but really actively building my email list. Mm. So when I went back, you know, I, I'm not gaining more followers than I'm cutting off when I go through mm -hmm. to clean out my list. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is something that I kind of let fall by the wayside mm -hmm. because I'd gotten mm -hmm. distracted from just some of the basics. And I actually wrote them down. I said that, um, you know, I, I, I started looking at growing my audience and my email list, mm -hmm. write my kind of book and focus on reader engagement and experience. And those are the three things that I think I did really well early on. Mm -hmm. And those are the things I need to really focus on staying engaged and doing mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. And especially at a time like this, where it's pretty um, unsure what's happening. You know, I mean, I think all the marketing uh, sort of things have nothing's changed drastically. And, you know, I think when things feel stagnant, mm -hmm. that's when we need to look at the basics too. I mean, we should always focus on it, but if you don't know what to do, go back to that. And that's so true. Yeah. So I think that's true. Plus with AI and everything, and I'm not like, I'm not terrified of AI um, or anything, but I do believe that Figuring out what your readers want and giving that to your readers and connecting with them is what is going to set us apart from the machines. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think let me that, tell you a funny AI story because it happened sure. just today before this call. Um, a group of authors and I are writing in a shared universe right now. <laughs> and um, we, we, we decided that as a fun thing to try to write, write some reviews as dead authors Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, I, can't, I, I was thinking about how I was going to do it. And I was like, this is what AI is for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I put in the details of one of my friend's books mm -hmm. and their characters in a brief prompt into chat GPT and said, written in the style of William Shakespeare. And it kicked out the most on target, hilarious oh. review of their book written by William Shakespeare. It That's had awesome. four, it had four suits and D and vowels. <laughs> I mean, it was just spot on perfect. And that's great. You know, that's that's exactly what we can use AI for and be mm -hmm. comfortable as authors using those mm -hmm. tools yeah. to, to do fun things with their books. Yes. Yeah. I think I that's agree. so creative too. Mm -hmm. So much fun too. Mm -hmm. So you said that um your, you know, you had during the pandemic, you had to kind of redefine and look at things has has your business model changed recently it it has and and we i know we're going to talk more about this later on but it's really been about really diversifying how i generate income as an author mm -hmm. and for me that's not going out and starting a course or teaching something mm -hmm. um and i'm not putting down anybody who does that there are a lot of great authors out there who are able to pass along their knowledge in a way and and should be paid for that service mm -hmm. that they provide. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, it's it's about figuring out ways to re meet new readers and meet new audiences in different places and ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've I've 
you branched into Kickstarter, which we're going to mm-hmm. talk about a little later on. Mm-hmm. Um, I sell direct on my website for some of my products and, and some of my books. Um, and all my audio books are direct mm-hmm. on my website. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, there's that method. And then connecting with readers in like um, uh, subscription models. That's something mm-hmm. that, that I'm branching into after the Kickstarter. That'll be my fall project. Right. Is, to, to have develop a subscription for the fans that want that extra, you know, that extra something from me. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. This is a way to reach and give them that opportunity. Right. Right. And you're actually doing that now. You're on vacation and you're on your way yes. home. You're going to stop and have a reader meetup. Uh, right. with you. And, yeah. and I'm excited about this. So the, the reader and his, his um, girlfriend that I'm meeting with, they're both really big fans of mine. Um, and he's actually an admin in one of the admins in my reader group on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So he helps moderate the group for me and stuff and and puts posts in there when he's reading different things. And, and that's great. And I really appreciate his help. He's also the person who's bought the biggest ticket item on my last Kickstarter. Wow. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, if someone's going to spend 500 bucks on me. Mm-hmm. And I'm two hours away from them mm-hmm. when I'm on vacation. Maybe I can stop and meet them for lunch. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he was so excited that he's surprising his girlfriend. She doesn't know that they're meeting oh. me for lunch. Oh, um, wow. And my my wife and my daughter and her wife are going to be with me. So we're all going to just kind of sit down and have a group lunch at the Cracker Barrel off of 95 on the way home. <laughs> and uh, I'm so looking forward to uh, having the opportunity to meet them. Yeah. And, and, you know, in some small way, make their day, which yeah. I don't quite understand, but that's okay. I, I guess I'm a little too humble in that respect, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I think that there are ways that we can reach our readers in different ways. And, yeah. you know, as a, as a male, it's easier for me to meet people in public mm-hmm. in places mm-hmm. like that. I, under, I acknowledge that, but I think there are ways that any author can set up an opportunity to meet up with their readers, even if it's on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Um, I know mm-hmm. Martha Carr has regular monthly pizza parties mm-hmm. on Zoom that she holds. Mm-hmm. Um, and what a great idea, right? Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And, and I, so there are ways to do it without actually meeting in person. There are ways to do it safely. But um, in, engaging with our readers is something we can all improve upon. Yeah, right? and That's like great. going back to the AI thing, this is going to be more important, maybe not necessarily meeting up in person with your readers, but like letting them know that mm-hmm. there's a real person behind the books. Mm-hmm. And that's one way to do it is to meet them in person or to have yep. a Zoom call or something yep. like that. Or, you know, I can't think of anything else right now. I was going to mention Zoom for people who are less interested in mm-hmm. like spending two or three hours with somebody that they right. is essentially a stranger, but they mm-hmm. know you, but it's kind of right. like a s- interesting situation, but I'm sure there's other ways mm-hmm. you could connect where you're like emphasizing that you're a person and mm-hmm. in real life, you know, well, even in, you know, even upping your email game yeah, is just a way to do that. You know, if you're not comfortable meeting face to face in a zoom call, um, I, I think you can definitely do it. It, you know, even through your emails or the way you post on social media um, places, um, there are different ways to let more of your authentic self show through mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, that will connect better with readers. That's great. Yeah, 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 very true. Mm-hmm. Well, we also like to talk about what we've learned. And one of our questions is always, you know, like, what mistakes have you made? So we wanted to know, like, how you view mistakes and how do you cover when things recover when things go wrong? You know, it's interesting because I got biz- I, I've been in business off and on different ways through most of my adult life. And some of the best early advice I got for business in general was to fail forward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's mm-hmm. an idea of, of get, you know, yeah, you got to get yourself mm-hmm. back up, but fall, fall forward, fail forward. And, and in the sense that your failures are going to happen, it's, it's how you learn from those failures. It's how you take the, what, hap, what caused that failure and what can you do to either make it not happen again, or when it happens again, that you benefit from it. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that there are opportunities to do that. I wrote some things down because I wanted to make sure I should, said this. Um, I have 50 books. Are all of them amazing, best-selling ventures into literary? No. <laughs> 
They're not. <laughs> I, I have I have two series that no matter what I do, I can't get them to sell. One of them has a lot of critical acclaim. In other words, the reviews are great, mm-hmm. but it just it just for whatever reason, I can't get new readers to read them. Mm-hmm. I can get my existing readers, some of them, to read the books, mm-hmm. and they love them when they get to them. There's another one that's just a stinker. I love it. I love the characters. I thought it was going to be a hit. It it misses. I know it misses now on some of the the market stuff for the genre, um, and it's just a stinker. Mm-hmm. I you know mm-hmm. and 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 so you know I, I think if if it if it's your first series, that's going to be hard for an author. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it was like my third series. And so it was hard because I thought, oh, I'm, I can write gold, you know, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and then I wrote this third series and it just didn't do anything. Yeah. And it was hard at the time to really understand why. And now I just I just write it off. You know, it is mm-hmm. it is not my best work. I need to acknowledge that I need to figure out what I did wrong and fail forward and mm-hmm. write the next series and make it better and make mm-hmm. that Jamie Davis experience book. Mm-hmm more of what is authentic for me. Right. Yeah. This makes me think of, I think it was Deanna Roy we were talking mm-hmm. to, and she talked about how some of her books are for cold audiences mm-hmm. and some of her books are for warm audiences. And I was right. like, that's a new way to think about that. Mm-hmm. Because like, if we concentrate on the ones that we know will draw in the readers to pull them in, then we can focus, you know, our marketing and stuff on those books. And then once they're in, we can say, oh, and I also have these instead of trying to make all of our books uh, entry points mm-hmm. to our world. You know, some yeah. of them are just yeah. better, do better jobs at that than others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I love that idea mm-hmm. of cold and warm books. That is such a really novel way to think about it. And it is true about that one series. If I, I get my readers, existing readers to go over and try that series out, I get very positive responses back from my existing readers. But for a new reader cold to me, they they just don't seem to go beyond book one. So. Yeah. Yeah. And we all have books like that that are like, mm-hmm. mm, that's for the fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what's the best and worst advice you've ever been given? Oh, this this I wrote down because I, <laughs> a, I got it. Hope I didn't um, give it to you. <laughs> the best advice I've ever received, and I got I got it from Craig Martell um from over at 20 books. Um, and that is the best advice is for an author to cl- for me to climb my mountain and not somebody else's mountain mm-hmm. yeah that we all have our own challenges and our own struggles and our own obstacles that we throw in our own in our own way mm-hmm. and it's for me to, to figure out how to get to what my perfect my best goal is my best self is whether that's whether that's professionally or personally or whatever mm-hmm. um i i i like I said earlier, I, there are people who write slower than me and have wonderful success. Jamie, you're, you know, you you have great you have great series of books out there that my wife loves and tons of people Thank love. You. And Thank you. you know, it is it is you've done it differently, and I shouldn't try to write your books, and you shouldn't mm-hmm. try to write my books. And right. so, you know, figure out what success is for you, and then go ahead and move forward you know, on that path. Um, that was the best advice I received. And and I think it holds true because it's something that, you know, that mountain will change over time. Yep. And mm-hmm. they focused on what it is for you to make mm-hmm. it special. Mm-hmm. Um, the other, the worst advice, and, and this is very specific, but I, I had somebody convince me to try to do more of a traditional PR approach to writing uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and, you know, do the blog tour and, you know, do um, write a, write a press release and send it out. And, and there are people out there who like, I hired somebody to do it and they yeah. did all the things that they said they were going to do for me. So I don't want to say like they didn't do their job right. because there are people out there who work very hard at this and they, she did her job a hundred percent it just flopped. It wasn't, Mm -hmm. it wasn't what I needed to connect with readers. And Mm -hmm. I think um, they're, you know, really think long and hard about, you know, spending that money um, when you might be better off spending that towards um, learning, you're teaching yourself how to make your Facebook ads more profitable Mm -hmm. or something Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Because that was just a, you know, it was a fail forward for me. 
Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I tried it. I, I, and, and that's sometimes you're going to spend money on stuff that's not going to work. And right. this is one of those situations for me where, you know, the traditional PR route just didn't work for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now you can kind of mark that off the list. And later, mm-hmm. if you want to circle back, you can, but you've tried it. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. So let's talk about your Kickstarter. So you have, mm-hmm. tell us about it. it's coming up soon. When this episode goes out, it'll be launching about, yeah, pretty about, shortly after that. Yeah. Just about a month after this, this episode goes live um, in July, on July 11th, 2023, um, the Kickstarter will launch. It's a brand new series. Um, mm-hmm. that's a side series in one of my existing universes. Right. So that's kind of fun. So people, yeah. that are existing readers, I think it's going to be a treat for them. I've got a couple of nice Easter eggs thrown in there for my, my existing readers. Um, it's the story of, um, it's kind of, for those of us of a certain age, it's Mr. Mom and Uncle Buck meets Supernatural. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I love that. I do this- too. It is the series I was born to write. I was Mr. Mom for 18 years, raised my kids while my wife worked very hard at her corporate job. Mm-hmm. And um, I've I've done all the things. I've made all the mistakes. Uh, I've been that awkward guy hanging out with everybody else's wife. Um, yeah. You know, it is. <laughs> the PTA meetings and yes, stuff. Yeah. The PTA meetings and stuff. Um, so this is a series that's about um, um an uncle who gets custody of his um, niece and nephew after mm-hmm. their parents die. And he finds that they're half fae and mm. he has, it gets indoctrinated into the magical world immediately. And um, there's a sister-in-law who he has a sordid history with that wanted to be guardian and isn't the guardian. And she's of course, full fae. And mm-hmm. so, um they they will have a long slow burn romance over the course of the series where they just never quite get yeah. the nice. Well, this isn't your first Kickstarter, right? You've done another no. one. No, I did another one. This was on the first Kickstarter I did was a uh, three omnibus hardcover editions oh, okay. for my existing series. So there are nine books in that series. So I bundled mm-hmm. them three books into an omnibus hardcover. And so there were three of them. Three times three is nine. Yeah, mm-hmm. that works. And um I it really went very well. I was very surprised that it did as well as it did. I was you know, hoping to make, you know, maybe hit like $2,000. I made mm-hmm. almost $7,000 on it wow. on the Kickstarter. Um, people were happy to spend the money. You know, it was $75 a book, mm-hmm. um, including shipping in the U.S. to get them. Um, mm-hmm. So if you wanted all three, it was 150 bucks mm. uh, or no. 225 bucks. I can't do right. math. That's why well, I'm an author. I was going to um, say, I don't math. I, I just shook my, I just nodded my head. Yeah. Me too. Right. <laughs> so yeah. And it went really well. It also was something that, that taught me to really think hard about what other things people might want if they didn't want the, the hard covers where there are other mm-hmm. things that they, so I had a logo pin, you know, enamel pin made up. I had um, some side things. I wrote some extra short stories for people mm. that had mm-hmm. read the books, but wanted to participate and contribute, but wanted something new along with their contribution. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wrote some additional short stories. And, and that was something that was fun for me to revisit some side characters and some situations from the original series. <laughs> um, and, and so that that went really well. And that gave me the impetus to say, this is a way that I can reach people in a different way. Mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and pre-launch a series. So that's what I'm doing with the upcoming Kickstarter mm-hmm. is I'm pre-launching that um, series on Kickstarter six months before it goes live on any other on other store. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's that was going to be my next question was like, how does that fit into, like you said, you're also thinking about doing uh, subscriptions. Mm-hmm. So like, are you going to pre-launch them? launch wide and then how are you how are you how does it so all fit together i'm, I'm gonna pre <laughs> i'm gonna pre-launch on kickstarter and they they will have the ebooks in hand um by early september and they'll have the ebook they'll have the print books in hand by the end of september beginning of october um the books are written i'm writing book three now so mm-hmm. the books will be written before the the series starts the audiobooks are already started so the audiobooks mm-hmm. will be part of the kickstarter too i'm doing the whole package um, and the opportunity here is to 
um, reach those core readers that really want things early, that want to get mm-hmm. their hands on these mm-hmm. books mm-hmm. before anybody else gets them. And they can sit right. there and say, hey, these you know, I read these before anybody else got them. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what the next step will be, uh, I'm going to launch a con- subscription in the fall that will start giving people access to my my draft chapters as I mm. write them oh, wow. over time. And then they'll also get the finished books at the end mm-hmm. as they're put out. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's the plan for that. Um, I, I, I still haven't fleshed it out fully, but mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be at least very on a very basic level, at least that for the, the initial opportunities. Right. Um, and then this series will then start launching in January, 2024. Two weeks before each book launches, I'll make it available for that limited time on my website, direct to my readers mm-hmm. to, for mm-hmm. via my email list. Mm-hmm. So then, like if they didn't pick it up at Kickstarter and they, they weren't get, on the subscription, then right. they can get it then. They can and that's get great. It then. Yeah. And, and I can still make that additional money on direct sales mm-hmm. um, from my core, again, my core readers who didn't want to do Kickstarter. Um, mm-hmm. It's really about meeting people where they are. You know, some mm-hmm. people are all right, don't want to learn, don't want to sign into a new platform. Mm-mm. Yeah. And yeah. and then, oh, they, they're okay buying direct from me, but they don't mm-hmm. like PayPal, so they're not going to mm-hmm. do it this time. Right. And right. so then, but they'll buy from Amazon. Okay, well, they'll mm-hmm. wait, then they'll wait two more weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'll pull it off my store and put it on Amazon in KU and right. and do the full launch um, where a book comes out a month for three mm-hmm. months. Right. And then I'll do the next Kickstarter is already going to be scheduled for the following July, where I will do the next three books in that series oh, wow. and wrap up that series. Um, and great. it follows the uh, it follows the kids as they grow up through school. So mm-hmm. like okay. book one is the oldest child is four. Then she's mm-hmm. in first grade. Then she's in fourth grade mm-hmm. and she'll be in mm-hmm. middle school. Then two books in high school and graduation and that whole yeah. nonsense. So That's it's great. really um, it, it's it, it's it's going to be fun to kind of follow them. And so I'm hoping the plan is that the next Kickstarter, people will be really primed to have mm-hmm. the opportunity to get in early on the next Kickstarter. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Well, are you creating extra content for this Kickstarter or is it just yes, th- there'll be There'll be, um, so the Kickstarter versions of the paperbacks mm-hmm. will have, each of them will have a short story in them. Oh, okay. So, and they, I will pull those out when the, when the books go on Amazon. So the only people who will get those short stories as part of those paperbacks will be the, or, or the eBooks too, obviously. Mm -hmm. Um, But they, they will have um, the short stories as part of their content package. Okay. Okay. Um, And then those short stories may become available later on, you know, but they won't be ever bundled as part of this package Mm -hmm. again. That's So you're, your Kickstarter editions will be special in that yes. they'll never probably have that opportunity to get that together again. They may be able to buy it later in some other format, but to get it packaged together like that. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love that. So, I think that's a very smart idea. Yeah. And and I I enjoy the short stories for me. And I think a lot of romance, I know a lot of romance offers do this where they have the epilogue chapters mm-hmm, or, the, mm-hmm. or the little, the side stories, what happens after the fact. Right. Um, these are opportunities, especially because years pass between each of these three books. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll be an opportunity for me to write a little bit about what happened in between. Right. Mm-hmm. Share that with yeah. the readers. Okay. Yeah. Um... Well, I have one other question about Kickstarter. I don't know if Jamie's got any more, but I was thinking like since you were one of like the early adopters for authors, you know, kind of in our indie world using Kickstarter and now you're doing your second one. So do you have anything that you're not doing that you did? Like has your mm, way of thinking about it changed? Question. Yeah. Yeah. I'm making notes for myself. I think so. <laughs> I think my I think the thing the big thing that changed was that I, I used it for an initially for an existing series because I felt like mm-hmm. it was it was I had nothing to lose. Mm-hmm. I already had the audiobooks yeah. done. Everything was everything was there. I just kind of wrote a couple more short stories mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know made and made it additional content. Um uh this is this is really a, a different venture in that I'm I'm launching something brand new and mm-hmm. and it it told me there was a possibility that that would be something that I could make work and I 
you know, I have readers that are already excited about it just from the little teasers I've put out there. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and just a tip, I, because the books are, because the first two books are already written and the first audio book's done, I already shared it with my beta readers Mm -hmm. and said, here's book one, let me know what you think. And then I put these teaser posts up there and they all commented, Oh my God, you're going to love this series. I already got a sneak peek. And yeah. So yeah. it's got people, it's already got a little bit of buzz written up, you know, building about it because right. of, um, you know, and again, it's that you got to be willing to give some things away for free yeah. As, yeah. A, yeah. as a business mm-hmm. and as an author, you, mm-hmm. you, you have to be able to give that teaser out there. And mm-hmm. when you're doing free books, giving away the first book to a few readers that are going to be engaged with the process. Mm-hmm. And I have no doubt that these people are going to go in and join the Kickstarter. Yeah. Even right. though they've already gotten book one, mm-hmm. yeah, um, because th- I think they're those types of fans, yeah, yeah, because they love your books and they want all the special stuff they can get, yeah, yeah. And I think it's just it, you know one of the things I've been doing is paying attention to other Kickstarters, either in in publishing, but also in other things that have to do with fantasy and sci-fi. So like the gaming. Kickstarters mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it just looking and seeing what they're doing, what kind of extra, what where where are their reward tiers? I think that's mm-hmm. something that everybody can do. It doesn't take mm-hmm. long to do a little research on your Kickstarter app on your phone while you're mm-hmm. you know while you're waiting in the doctor's office or you know yeah. waiting to pick the kids up at school or whatever it might be. You know, take some time to look at some yeah. other Kickstarters yeah. and figure out what they're doing that makes that might make sense to say, Oh, wow. You know, I could do something similar to that in my reward tiers. Mm -hmm. And, and that would be something that's a little different. Yeah. 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 And something I didn't know is like, you can create a tier and launch your thing. And then if nobody signs up for that tier, you can archive that and change Mm -hmm. it and create a new one. Like if Mm -hmm. somebody purchases that tier, you could still archive it, but you'll still have to fulfill to them. Right. But but like if nobody's purchased it, you can just delete it basically and yeah. try something else. So yeah. I didn't realize that when I started. And I think that's if, especially if you're doing a longer Kickstarter. Um, yeah, you know, you can really learn from the early adopters what works and what doesn't work, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and 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 make it a, and make it a bonus thing. Like, hey, we've added new tiers. You know, <laughs> right, right. Um, mm-hmm. for for those readers that already joined or were looking at it. They'll be, they'll come back and reread it and look at it again, give it a fresh look. So yeah. I think that's a great idea. I, yeah. Don't forget to do that. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. And you said you're doing yours for 21 days, right? 21 days. I did, the first, one for one. Se- <laughs> did the first one for 17 and I, I was thinking I'm going to do it for 17. And then I, then I um, said, no, I'm going to try 21 days, full three weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I did in the first one that worked really well was I wrote most of my content ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And I, and, and I'm going to tell you to do something that is counterintuitive to a lot of us in the author business. I emailed my readers every single day during mm-hmm. the Kickstarter. Yeah, okay. And <laughs> I cringed and thought, this is it. I'm going to have, I'm going to cut my list in half. Watch yeah. this. They're going to yeah. leave in droves. All I right. think over the total Kickstarter, I lost 10. I lost 10 unsubscribes. Wow. Nice. So, now I I warn them ahead of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You I know, think I, if you tell them ahead of time, yeah. they're they're a lot more receptive than you think uh, yeah. they will be. I did that. I said, hey, I'm gonna listen, my Kickstarter is gonna start and I'm gonna put out there a lot of different things about why this Kickstarter is important to me. Mm-hmm. And if you just want to delete those emails as soon as they pop up, go ahead. Mm-hmm. And I'll go back to my every two weeks email newsletter mm-hmm. after the Kickstarter is done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to give you a heads up that you're gonna get a lot of emails from me. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. I think all you have to do is just tell them. And that's mm-hmm. what I did. So I'm I'm going to pre-write a lot of the content. And so that I'll have, you know, I can basically just cut and paste out of a, a file to create my next yeah. you know, newsletter the morning of or the night before, set it to schedule and go. Mm-hmm. And um, um, and then a lot of them write themselves. And, you know, honestly, if you're afraid of where you're going to come up with the content, um, a lot of them write themselves. The, the the I at least four of my email mails were oh my gosh we're almost to the next <laughs> the next funding level 
you know, I can't believe we got there this fast. Right. You know, if you haven't jumped in yet, now's your chance. And right. mm-hmm. th- those kind of emails were kind of fun for me to write. I was excited about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it made it a lot. E- it was the, e- some of them the easiest emails I've ever written. So. <laughs> yeah. And you've already done all the hard work with creating the page. So you mm-hmm. can just pull something from the page and say, yep. Hey, this was, mm-hmm. this is what, you know, I'm ha- I'm excited to share with you this today or this week or whatever you know introduce each of your characters separately in a separate email yeah Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it and like you said sarah to do that um you know pull the content directly from your page because don't assume that everybody's read your whole kickstarter page scroll all the way to the bottom and pull that stuff out of there where Mm -hmm. hey today we're going to talk about the digital reward tiers Mm -hmm. and you know, or the physical reward tiers, or why are you going to like these enamel pins or mm-hmm, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be? Yeah, I think that's true because I don't, I mean, long emails mm, or blog posts. I was just thinking the other day, I really hate them. I hate them. I don't read them. I skim them because skim. Yeah. I don't like big, I'd rather. And then a lot of times if I get an email, I'll go to my computer because it seems like less. Uh-huh. And it uh-huh. probably is. I just I am so overwhelmed by this big chunk of text that mm-hmm. I don't know. But anyway, that's well, neither and there's, here a, there. there's a lesson there though, Jamie. There a lot of people are overwhelmed by big blocks of text. Mm-hmm. So make sure you use a lot of white space mm-hmm. when you write your emails. Yeah. You know, make sure you're putting a lot of returns in there to mm-hmm. make sure there's plenty of space between the paragraphs because right. some of the, that makes it you can skim a paragraph with two or three sentences and yeah. get the gist of what it says mm-hmm. very easily. But if right. it's a big block of text, you'll get lost halfway through. Yeah. 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 That's absolutely true. true. Well, you talked about selling your books on your website, but you have a shop on your website and mm-hmm. you sell merchandise, correct? Yes. And well, I, tell us, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say I, I use, um, I have a WordPress site mm-hmm. and I use the plugin for WooCommerce. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I basically am running the store myself and I collect mm-hmm. payments direct through pay, using PayPal. Um, mm-hmm. I, um, use printful to fulfill. Mm-hmm. Um, that's another plugin that works with WooCommerce mm-hmm. and printful.com is what I, the people I use to print and create all the things that I I'll opt to sell. Um, mm-hmm. and interestingly enough, I, I was, I was one of those things where my daughter-in-law convinced me to do it. And I was like, okay, she was helping me with my website and some of my design stuff. And she just put it up there and I just started announcing it. And I, so I always have a link at the bottom of my, all my newsletters to a product on Mm -hmm. my page. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mm -hmm. I try to change it up every now and then, but sometimes I get lazy and it stays the same product. (laughs) But invariably, when I send my newsletters out, I sell one or two. You That's know, a, awesome. t- a T-shirt or a baseball cap or a mug or mm-hmm. um, or right now I've got um, audiobook bundles you can only get from me. So mm-hmm. like yeah. you, nowhere else can you get the entire nine book series of Extreme Medical Services than on my website um, mm-hmm. in audiobook. So it's, you know, and it's cheaper than a credit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I figure it's a great way to get people to come use my store. And mm-hmm. and um, those books, are, you know, are, are there. Uh, you know, all my audio books are available on my website. So I try mm-hmm. to, to do it that way. Um, and so I just always, I don't pimp it, but I always put it at the bottom of my emails to say, hey, here's a product for you right. um, that's um, on sale this month or yeah. here's a special or something. Right. Yeah. Can you tell us why you decided to do WooCommerce instead of Shopify? You know, um, I don't think Shopify was really on my radar when I first did this. It was probably almost a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Shopify for some for for the author brands at least has been something that's been relatively. I know Joanna Penn's just started talking about it like a year ago. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So it wasn't really on my radar. And I've always been a person who's more been more of a DIY kind of mm-hmm. person regarding my website. Right. So I'm more comfortable using plugins and mm-hmm. setting things up for myself and handling things from a business sense on my right. own. Um, yeah. But I think Shopify is a great option for people that want kind of a more of a plug and play mm-hmm. opportunity yeah. mm-hmm. for their yeah. for their books and their content and their yeah. other stuff that they want to sell. Yeah. Yeah. I was glad we were going to talk to you and touch on this because 
um, Shopify is great. And I mean, I'm working on a store for myself, but the WooCommerce, it's a plugin, right? So there's no, is there a cost to it? No. Yeah. So you can just use that and set it up. You have to set it up yourself and manage it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so. but I mean, it's like any other plugin. You have to make sure it stays updated. Um, yeah. Every now and then the, the WooCommerce will say, the update will come back and say, you must now update your database. So you have to do that mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm on my website every other, every couple of days at the minimum. So yeah. I, I'm always, you know, if, if it's not something you're prepared to, to stay on top of, I would definitely do something a little different, you know, yeah. maybe do something that's yeah. a little more, um, let somebody else handle the back end. Yeah. But I mean, if you're trying to save money, that's a great way to do it because Shopify has a monthly fee or annual fee, you know, that you have to pay, you know, and a lot of people that it might be better to start on WooCommerce and see if there's interest and then maybe move to Shopify later if you want Mm -hmm. to be more elaborate, but then you you're trying it and finding out without spending a ton of money. So I think that's a great option. And and Mm -hmm. WooCommerce has premium plugins that you can get. Um, I don't use them, but they're, they're there. Like they, they do, they can handle shipping for you and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I, first of all, most of my things are either digital products or Printful will fulfill them for you. Mm-hmm. Um, so you don't have to worry about that end of things. Um, and, and I, and really, I, I don't think there's anything that you can do elsewhere that you can't do with WooCommerce out of the box with the free mm-hmm. version. That's great. It's, um, yeah. you know, you can do coupons, you can do sales, you can do all kinds of things, <laughs> um, you know, group discounts or things like that. You can, you can, you really have a lot of control. Yeah. Are you using BookFunnel for your digital fulfillment? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Can't go wrong with BookFunnel. Mm, can't go wrong with, you know, Damon, God bless that man. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think I met him, what, what was it, Jamie, 2016 when he yeah, was 2016. Artist Artist Summit mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I first heard about Book Funnel there, and mm-hmm. you know, I've never looked back once it was available. I right. I've, mm-hmm. you know, watched him. He he continues to innovate. Somebody puts a bug in his ear about something, mm-hmm. he figures out how to make it <laughs> yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, he had just started it uh, mm-hmm. before the Smart Artist Summit because people were talking about it, and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about because I hadn't put a book out yet, and when they explain what it does and why he did it, you know, so you mm-hmm. weren't, the author wasn't having to tell people how to sideload things onto their mm-hmm. readers. I was like, Oh, now yeah. I get it because yeah. that would be a nightmare. A nightmare. I, feel like, I feel like we're the grandparent authors sitting there going, <laughs> you know, remember when you had to email the reader the file and yeah, then you had yeah. to explain to them how to put it on their Kindle. Yeah. Uh, yeah we're book funnel yeah yeah Yeah. back in the dark ages yeah Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) oh so let's see there was something else i was going to ask you about your store oh um one thing that people are always curious about is taxes like and getting started Mm -hmm. like sales tax and all that do what advice would you have for people who are thinking about this but they're like oh i don't know contact the tax professional Perfect. I, 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 I don't want to give any kind of things that might sound like advice. So mm-hmm. I will say, talk to your own accountant. If you're in business, you should have an accountant um, and, you know, contact them and explain to them what you're trying to do and find out from them what the requirements are for your state, your jurisdiction mm-hmm. or your mm-hmm. country. Um, mm-hmm. Everybody's got different thresholds for how much you need to sell in a year to mm-hmm to um, have to pay that, that state tax. Mm -hmm. Um, And then like, I just know in the state of Maryland, anybody that lives in Maryland, I have to automatically collect sales tax for and everybody else. I have to watch the numbers. Right. So so that's kind of where I fall. Yeah. So I discovered that it wasn't as bad as I thought, like it was complicated. Did you feel the same way? I feel the same way, but I don't want to, I don't want to give bad advice. So I will just say, you know, talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about because what I've learned and what I know may not be, because I have somebody that handles all that stuff for me. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't want to put, give you bad advice. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that is great. Mm -hmm. Jamie, you got any more questions about the store? No, I don't. I don't. Okay. I just think it. I think you're just doing amazing things. I'm so happy uh, for you. And I mean, I knew you back in the day. So yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. So if you were starting over today, what would you do differently, Jamie? Mm, wow. If I were starting over today, 
I think I'd, I think I'd trust myself better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I kind of was very doubtful of, of what my opportunities were in this, in this business early on and didn't really trust in, in who I was as a storyteller. And maybe that's yeah. something I had to travel through anyway yeah. to get to where mm -hmm. I am. But I wish I, I could have trusted you know, my voice a little bit more um, mm -hmm. would have been more important to me. And, and, you know, part of part of what's been a joy of that process has been all the people I've met along the way. You two, mm -hmm. um, you know, from from that very first opportunity where I got together with authors for the first time mm -hmm. and and moved forward from there. Um, you know, the 20 books conference is coming up. I'm, I'm assist, one of the assistant directors of that conference. And I hope people will come to that. Um, you know, it, it's just any opportunity you have to meet with other authors, whether they're indie or trad or mm -hmm. hybrid, do it, take that opportunity because we really bond well together and mm -hmm. we are isolated too often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just remember, everybody's just as nervous as you are. So you know. True. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you won't regret it. I no, think that just meeting with other it. authors in person yeah. is always a good thing. So, mm -hmm. well, tell people where they can find about you and your books and um, your Kickstarter. Okay. Well, you can find uh, me and my books at jamiedavisbooks.com, J A M I E davisbooks.com so uh, Jamie and I spell our names a little differently but because mm -hmm. my um, mom was on drugs <laughs> <laughs> um and um you can also um get to my kickstarter I'll, um at jamiedavisbooks.com slash kickstarter that'll always point to my most recent kickstarter so all right perfect that's great yeah perfect perfect well thank you for coming back and talking to us again and just mm -hmm. sharing so much we've had a great time and I think it'll be really helpful for everyone. I think be. it'll be really good. It will so, be. Yeah. So yeah. I'm glad you could be here. And reach out to me. If, if, if somebody, I'm always open to talking to authors. I, I am a very outgoing and extroverted person, unlike many authors out there. <laughs> so if you have a question and I can answer it quickly, I will happily shoot you an email back and give you an answer or try to point you in the right direction. Yes. And yeah. he was very helpful. So he that's is. awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks for listening today. Um, you can find all the links at wish I know them podcast.com. And don't forget our sponsor vellum. It's at try slash wish. And thanks to Alexa Larberg for editing and producing the podcast and to Adriel Wiggins for doing the admin. We'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye. I don't care. <laughs>